In Isaiah 40 on Sunday, we learned again or we remembered again that God's word endures forever. There is no opposition of any scale that can stand against God. God's word, it's not like our word. Um, Our word changes, doesn't it? And we don't always keep our word. God always keeps his word. He is faithful to it. But also, even though God's promises are kind of cosmic in scale, even though that they will find all their fulfilment in the future, individual Christians can know that he is at work in their individual day-to-day lives. We go to the cross and we realise that all of God's promises are yes in Christ. And therefore we see the victory of the cross and we see the love poured out of the cross and we know that God has acted on behalf of his people um, and for the future, but he is also at work in my life now, pouring love into it. He died for me. Um, He died to deal with my sin as well as to deal with our sin. We know that his promises um, are faithful to us as individuals as well as God's people throughout time and across the world. And it is this way of seeing things, it's what the Bible calls faith, it is this faith, this knowing these things about God that provoke an amazing confidence in God's people in very, very hard times. There's people across our world at the minute, Christians across our world, who are demonstrating amazing confidence in the face of just terrible persecution. And it's because of this faith that God has given them. And God has given this faith to all of his people. And as we look through God's word, we see this faith at work, making people do amazing things in very, very difficult circumstances. In our Daniel series, we saw how Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were able to stand in front of King Nebuchadnezzar and in front of a fiery furnace and say this, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Those are just brilliant verses, aren't they? Um, These guys saying we're going to choose God's glory confidently um, because we believe that he is at work on our behalf. That's wonderful. We had a similar thing in Nehemiah. We did a Nehemiah series and um, Nehemiah wanted to go to Jerusalem um, and help fix the walls up. Um, But to do that, he's going to have to go into the king's presence and look sad and The king did not like people looking sad in his presence. But he goes in. He hadn't looked sad in his presence before. The king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king. Just wonderful, confident living because Nehemiah, yes, he was afraid, but he knew who his God was. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego knew who their God is. And now there's a whole chapter on this in God's word in Hebrews chapter 11. And we're not going to read it all now, um, but I do want to read some of it. Um, because again, this it just tells us how we should be confident, how this faith that God has given us should make us confident people. So listen to what Hebrews 11 says. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And as we go through Hebrews 11, there's a whole list of names commended for their faith. Abel, um, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah. And then we get to these verses, verse 13. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. Admitting they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. 
If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. This faith means we live confidently now, even in hard circumstances, because we know who our God is. But it also means we long for home. We long for the heavenly city. We are always looking forward to our real home, which is just absolutely wonderful. Keep going through the chapter. Abraham is mentioned again, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Moses. Um, it carries on when the walls of Jericho fell. Um, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, um, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Um, goes on to in, into people, the prophets being stoned and killed, and, and still trusting their God. It says this in verse 39, They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Faith is remembering who God is, and that allows you to act confidently. So um, please, Christ Church Riverside, as we go through Isaiah 40, as we are told to behold our God and fix our eyes on him, remember that this is true, it's utterly true. And so we can live very differently than we would if there was no God, um, or if there wasn't a God who wasn't like this. And so as we finish, let's read Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses... Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. We're back at the cross Again, aren't we? Consider him who endured such opposition. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Remember the cross of Christ and endure, persevere, keep going to the glory of God until one day we're all home together. Amen. Mm-hmm.